So now we're going to use JSON to build a very simple chat application. I love to use chat applications uh, to play with JSON because really they are, and there are so many better ways to build a chat application than the way I'm building it. I'm just using this as a great way to talk about JSON. So what we're really going to end up doing here is we're going to have two windows and each of them, one, two, each of them will be doing the same thing. Um, and they both have a chat button. There's a, a back end. And when we press the submit and send a ch new chat message back, the other one is in a, a loop and it's polling. It's checking to see if there's new chat messages. And when there is a new chat message, it uses Ajax to pull that back, the chat messages, an array of JSON uh, objects. And, um, and then it updates this part here. And so that's the idea of JSON is that we can use JavaScript to update some part of the screen and leave the rest of the screen alone. And so it's not like we're, this whole screen has to blink. Now, when we're doing things like making menus at the top and moving back and forth, we make it look like certain things are not changing. But in this situation, everything outside that little chat box is not changing. Um, we're going to do a full request response cycle when you type in something and press the chat button. So that's the basic idea of this application. So here is how it's working, basically. Um, you see, if you watch the network, every few seconds, about four to five seconds, it's doing a retrieval. So it goes, does a retrieval, does a retrieval, does a retrieval. And what it's getting is a JSON array, array of, of little messages. And then it reads this array and then it displays them. It wipes this window out using jQuery and then it redisplays the messages. And in this case, it's not really getting the new message, it's just getting all the message and it's just rewriting the whole thing. And so if you, you gotta watch to make sure that you see um, the new messages coming. So here's a bit of code in urls.py. We have uh, just the main view to, to talk, to do to the talking. And then the messages is just gonna be our bit of JSON stuff, okay? And, uh, and our, our, our model.py, it's a uh, pretty simple, it's, it's got an owner. We're going to use the owner pattern, even though we're going to do a little bit more of the work ourselves. Um, and it has a text field, and that's pretty much it, other than the, the stock date fields that we normally have. So if we take a look at the, at the views.py, we're going to do a, a simply a rendering of talk.html. You'll see when we get to talk.html that the dynamic part, you might, you might be surprised, like where are all the old messages? The old messages normally would be retrieved right in here, but they're not because we're gonna do that in JavaScript. And that bit of like retrieve the messages, the most recent messages is gonna be done in the browser now rather than in the server. So it's gonna be a request to show the page and then the page is gonna start and go grab the messages. And we just have a normal form and we're gonna grab the, grab the message text from that form and then add the owner to be request user and then save it. And then we're going to redirect back to ourselves. And so that's the view. And that's really quite simple. The, the interesting part is in the template. And so we have a bunch of stuff in the template. Um, this part here is pretty straightforward. We have that form that's at the top and the form is at the top. And um, we got leaving, we got reset, we got a chat button. We're going to post back in um, and then we have this chat content and that's important because the chat content is that part on the screen that we're going to replace over and over and over again. So one of the things that we're doing here is we're going to grab a spinner and uh, grab a URL to a little spinner that we've got stored in a static area and that spinner, you know, one of those little dot, 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 dot things that goes round and around, that's just an animated GIF. And what we're going to be doing is you put that out so that if it turns out that somehow your JSON is not working, the spinner stays there. And that's kind of a clue to you, at least as a developer, and maybe to your poor end user, that it's not running. But the idea is, is that spinner will be running, but then it'll be immediately be replaced by the data we pull in from JSON. So here's the interesting part. This is a, a function that we're just, right now it's just going to call a function and we'll get this started up in a bit. This function is going to do the hard work. The function is the part that's going to get triggered every once in a while to go retrieve all of the data. So we'll just call this function update message. And what it's going to do is it's going to go uh, give us a console log and um, 
Then we're going to grab get JSON, which is a jQuery to retrieve a JSON URL. And then the, it's, this get JSON takes two parameters. The first is a string, which is a URL. The second is a bit of code. And then the data that comes back from the JSON, meaning this data right here, which is an array of arrays, is going to be passed in as rows. So, you know, until you're really comfortable, I put a console.log so you see each time it's called. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do chat content empty. And remember the chat content is that little part right there that we're going to, we're going to wipe that out. That's just a jQuery to wipe it out. And then I'm going to loop through the rows. Yeah, we're going to loop through the rows. For var, we're going to loop, there's two rows here. Rows.length is two. And then we're going to grab it. And then we're going to say, we're going to append a paragraph tag in the first part of the row, plus a break tag and two non-blank spaces. That's so that it indents two spaces. That's the, that's the time underneath the text. And then we're going to take the second element of that row and print out a paragraph tag. And so that's what is going to put the rows of the chat. That's going to wipe it out and then fill it back up. We'll just append it. Append around and around and around and go through and append. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the timeout to call ourselves again in four seconds. So that basically says this is, this is actually part of vanilla JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, and we're saying 4,000 4, milliseconds from now, or four seconds from now, call this again. And so it's only going to do this after it has successfully got the JSON back. And so if the system starts slowing down, it after it's done the update of the little part of the screen with the chat messages, then it's going to say, and then run me again in four seconds. And that, that's, that's what's going to happen every four seconds. But then what we're going to do is also after that, we're going to trigger that we're going to get this thing started. And so we're going to say under document ready, there's the document ready, these three lines, we're going to tell Ajax not to cache that data because we expect every time we're going to call, we want the new messages. We're going to call update message, which is immediately going to start an Ajax request and then rewrite chat content and then wait four seconds and then do it again and again. And so this is like priming our timing loop. Okay. And then once we've done that, the only thing left to do is look at what is going to happen in that code that's going to give us back all those Ajax messages. So this is the talk messages. That's our URL that's going to do that. Um, it's a get request. And we're just going to go read all of the message objects ordered by created at the first 10 of them. So that's what that does. And um, we're going to, instead of just sending the messages down, we're going to augment it. And um, so we're going to take the message text and then we're called natural time. Natural time is the thing that says 13 minutes ago or 14 minutes ago instead of some long, ugly time thing. And that's something we're getting from uh, Django. And so that is the result. The results is a new array. Messages is an array and results is the array that looks like this. And what we've done is we've changed this second parameter basically uh, for each of the messages using natural time. And then results, in this case, is an array Actually, it's a it's a list. <laughs> I'm confusing my JavaScript and my Python. And Py we're in Python right now, and so it's a list. And then we we just return a JSON response, which serializes that into JSON and sends it all back. So you kind of get the idea of how you build a chat, and you can see how this is what's coming back, and it's hitting this messages, and this little cache equals false is adding this so that the URL does not seem to be the same URL from the browser's perspective. So it's really just taking a timestamp and appending it so the browser sees it not as the URL it retrieved before, so it doesn't have any chance to cache. And so that's really a quick look at how you might use JSON to build a really simple chat application. Um, it may, it's not the best way to build a chat, chat application. There's a thing called WebSockets that makes your chat application more efficient and more responsive. But again, this is a very simple background task to retrieve information from the server using Ajax and JSON.